So, do you want to know how to make realistic Ghibli landscapes in Blender in a fairly low effort, efficient, and also good looking manner? Well, boy, do I have the video for you today. Thank you so much, by the way, to Doe. They've been my top supporter on Ko fi for the last month, and they have been the first person to buy the House Moving Castle model on Ko fi if you head over to my Ko-Fi right now, you can pick up this model for only $29 for members, or $39 if you're not a member. Considering the over 150 hours of work put into this model, I tried to price it as low as I could. Alright, so the strategy is to go layer by layer. For this one, I went very simple. I'm just using a uh, Nishida Sky Texture. Set the strength down to like, uh, kind of around 0.3ish. And you can see that we can just change the sun rotation. And I think that if you don't really know what to do with it, the best thing you can do is just look at the reference imagery. You can see generally you get like the light coming in from one side and kind of at like a back angle. It's coming in like this kind of direction here. Gives you some shadow contrast over here. Gives some nice highlights. So that's kind of what we're doing here. You can see if we go over to this side, so this side looks pretty horrible in terms of lighting, it's a bit, you know, full on washed out. But from this side, you know, we've got the nice kind of like edges fading in. You can see the light's kind of making its way around, just a little bit. And yeah, then we've also obviously got kind of areas of shadow which are created by the light coming in from like that direction. Just kind of like how we pointed out in the reference imagery. Just kind of paint a little bit with your lighting. Your lighting is just really another tool for creating like texture and painting part of the image so just use it like that so we're gonna pick on the sky in this image gonna pick on the sky in this image gonna pick on the sky in this image as well there's other images we've got like these ones but they don't really kind of line up with the atmosphere that we're going for we're going for a more sunny day and I think it's um, quite valid just to go feel based when we bring in the sky it's looking like that pretty much and if we go into camera view you can see this is way too blue way too much ozone it's not very washed out, kind of bright. So I'm doing a couple things. I'm using this mix shader here, which is just controlling a little bit of transparency to try and fade it out a little bit, give it that faded look. Similarly, we're using the value slider on this node uh, hue saturation and value thing to dull, dull it even more. The main thing though is hue. We can make it less blue and more like kind of cyan colored, and that looks a lot more convincing. Now that that kind of aspect's good, Alright, so we're going to kind of keep going through this uh, matching process to the reference imagery, layer by layer. Next up, we've got mountains. We've got mountains in that one. We're kind of going more off of these mountains. They're like snow-capped, but they've got some grass in it, some rocks in them. Alright, so we're just going to do that next. And what do we do for these? Well, <laughs> I did not make these mountains. I've downloaded these ages ago in some kind of kit bash. Uh, free package and you can see that they are using a uh, displacement map to create this geometry this is not actually like all like made into real currently but yeah these mountains are really good because they allow me to change the values for the amount of grass so we can strip it down to rock we can change the values for snow give it more or less snow as you can see now next layer, you'll notice that in this image we have some kind of low hanging clouds and some haze which is just making these mountains a bit more washed out. And so that is why this has been included. It's subtle, this volume box has some mist in it, it's nothing too complicated, it's at the end of the day just a principal volume node and we're using some gradient and noise textures to kind of give it some interest, makes this a little bit more washed out. You can see the kind of difference in clarity between up at the top of the mountain where there's no haze and at the bottom. But there's a bit more haze it just separates the background from the foreground a bit better um, because they're able to do it a lot more clearly and a lot more kind of like elegantly inside of an anime but we can kind of try and mirror that here the other way which we can try and create a little more separation is through the use of depth of field you can see that the artist is able to kind of blur out and create these sort of like dreamy watercolor looking like images in the background we can go a little bit more kind of like realistic focus with this and it's very simple to set up. We can just set a target object or we can use an empty. And then by changing our f-stop values, we can make stuff really, really blurry and kind of create this like, this feels like a kind of miniature set now. But if we set it to something more reasonable, like 1.5 or something in this case, you can see that we're getting some noticeable blurring, but it's definitely not looking too much like a miniature. And similarly on stuff really in the foreground, it's just gonna make it look a lot less kind of like demanding in terms of attention, which is what we want. But yeah, depth of field is a really nice tool to kind of create that foreground, background, midground separation and help with the Ghibli feel. Now we're gonna look at the midground and the subject. And as you can see, that's kind of, if we've got a background and a like far background over here, and the strip here is kind of like our midground. And as you can see, we're kind of like grabbing the fact that we've got trees we've not grabbed pines but we've grabbed some kind of like tree assets and we've got some grass assets too i've just kind of spammed them around this ground is just a pretty simple plane which i've sculpted and got like a pretty high subdivision surface modifier on and we are using a displacement texture 
to create some like kind of like micro detail. When we zoom in up close, you can see that the ground is not completely flat up close. Now you'll also notice that um, I've got these other kind of like mountain pieces over here. These are downloaded mountain assets. You can see that these are just kind of like sculpted geometry. And you can see that they don't match perfectly, but from afar, they don't look very jarring, the kind of transition between the two materials. And this is a lot to do with what I mentioned earlier as a point of color matching. You can see that if I just push this straight into here, that's what this uh, kind of mountainside thing originally looked like. But with the use of this one extremely powerful hue saturation and value node, we can basically like change the hue to make it a little bit more green. We can turn down the saturation to kind of like make it a little bit more desaturated and match that. And then the main thing is that the value, uh, we're kind of brightening this up way more, making it look way more kind of like washed out. And that brings it to looking very close to this. And so that allows these two assets from kind of very different places to be used in conjunction with each other. Which is a very powerful thing because it means that, you know, you can basically like kitbash like a lot of stuff from very different sources and you get a very unique look. And ultimately the whole goal here is just to create the kind of Ghibli feel. But yeah, I mean obviously this is the kind of main centerpiece. You can see we've got this guy all posed up with the inverse kinematics rig. But yeah, these kinds of rigs are just quite useful because you can dynamically pose it. You might end up with an environment which looks a little bit different from what I've got here. And then it will just basically allow you to adjust your model to kind of fit in. Yeah, so now I've got this kind of like much more dynamic looking like pose thing. I'd recommend, you know, looking into finding models with cool rigs, especially inverse kinematic rigs made by yours truly. Right, and now that our midground's covered, because it was mostly pretty self-explanatory, you know, matching our reference as best we can, and then within the scene just matching the different assets together so that they look cohesive, not like they're actually kitbashed, you know. Alright, and lastly we're just going to look at the foreground. There's not really anything much in the foreground here, it just kind of fades into the midground immediately. But I kind of used these uh, plant assets, use that to create some interesting texture. You can see what depth of field is able to help us achieve here, soft blurring and stuff, so we can kind of place this anywhere. It just adds depth really, having that extra foreground thing just adds more depth. Yeah, if I zoom in you can kind of see that there's a particle system spreading these little like droplets of dust and stuff around to just add some extra atmosphere. But yeah, I'd say that that about covers the process that I go through for recreating Ghibli scenes. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to all of my supporters of late. I never thought that we'd get this successful with Ko-Fi and all of that, but I'm really glad to see that you guys are getting use out of the stuff that I have up in there and hope my CG trader provides some value as well. Uh, obviously biggest thank you to Smittering for being a constant top supporter. Dylan Heisler for being the highest tier YouTube membership supporter that I've ever had. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. Sorry that I have not uploaded much lately, kind of been a bit busy with some study working on my game project which you saw the trailer on recently, but worry not, more cool stuff is on the way, so thank you so much for watching again, I'll see you guys in the next one, it's been Yeezen, goodbye.